According to Ukrainians, adventure is dangerous, but routine is deadly. Mikola takes risks every time he goes to work. And his old Moscovich never fails to keep him on his toes. The car suffers at each pothole. However, Mikola doesn't go easy on his Moscovich, and for good reason. According to him, it's the ideal car. Mikola still has a long way to go. In some regions of Ukraine, in winter, traveling the shortest distance can become problematic very quickly. Ukraine is the largest country in Europe after France. However, they still have worries in their war with Russia. 30 years after its independence, Ukraine remains trapped in its past with its powerful neighbor. The machines are in good condition to arrive at their destination, despite some obstacles. In Ukraine, every meter gained is a victory. Ukrainians have paid very dearly for the collapse of the Soviet bloc. The economy has struggled to take off and money is lacking in many homes. Unemployment is on the rise and is pushing many inhabitants to their last resort. The Geiger meter here still proves the presence of radiation after 35 years. In Chernobyl, Everything is contaminated by radioactivity, and yet some people still live there. Ukrainians are risking their lives by staying in these areas. In their struggle to get by, the gaze of former heroes reminds Ukrainians that there is strength in unity. These days, it's a quiet city, but not long ago, a disturbing noise echoed in the streets of Klesiv. It came from this part of the forest, or at least from what is left of it. Here, men have bled the earth dry in their search for one of the most intriguing semi-precious stones. Golden yellow, dark brown, opaque white or translucent honey. Amber, nicknamed Tears of the Sun. This firestone is highly coveted.
His men aren't wearing hoods due to the cold. They simply don't want to be recognised. They are a part of the looting groups who massacre the region to find Amber. That is, if their old military machine dating from the former USSR is able to start. The newly discovered amber deposits are in the middle of the swamp. Without their mini tank, the veins are unreachable. One must be patient, as its speed doesn't exceed 15 kilometers per hour. And as for the police who attempt to catch them, illegal miners risk up to three years in prison. At $4,500 per kilo of amber, according to Victor, the police forces often want their share of the cake. То есть вышестоящее начальство, то есть получает деньги за въезд мотора, за день работы. То есть они эти люди называются билетчиками. Если тебя нет билет, ты не заплатил, то есть ты там работать не будешь. Плюсов и урочья сыхи билет стоит 250 долларов за 8 часов работы. Где люди работают как бы безбилетные, то есть они не платят за не заносят деньги там высшему начальству. A game of cat and mouse in the middle of these icy swamps. For now, they're advancing successfully into the marshland, despite their unpredictable and antiquated tank. From their Soviet past, Ukrainians have kept their sense of resourcefulness and public service, evident even in the most remote corners of the country. Although the administration is a bit Kafkaesque. The 1,000 inhabitants of Shepit have a church, a store that serves as a bar and, of course, a post office, which has no delivery car. The postman had to buy one himself with his own savings, which are much too meagre to afford anything other than this. Dimitri is constantly fearing whether his car will end up in one piece by the end of each round. Марка шистка, тройка шистка, шистка. Таранька, семьчик. 
Пребровцю машина була як легко на обслуговуванні. Я до неї типа привез. Все тих, як кажуть, тих, тих і справ, знаєте, устранення і тих справ. Ну що тут? Я не шатала собі по дорогі. Має приходиться робити, бо дуже розтягнуті учасники. Дорога погана, чоловік, хто її не, не тримує. Чи як, чи не зможуть стримати, та, чи нема сили просто. Ну, ну погодні условия нас, бачите, сніг великий, то та й... Так вона розбивається, не знаю, як вона. Розбивається дорога дуже. Ну, це Карпати. 20 years as a bus driver and 20 years as a letter courier. In total, 40 years that he's been facing these dangerous roads. His loved ones want him to give up the steering wheel, but for him, it's not an option. 2500. 2500 grams. Not enough, not enough. In our country, not enough. Така в мене звичай, звичай такі, що я не треба кажу місця, не треба, діти кажуть, лишай, то лишай. Я привик допомогти, дуже ще поки здорові і все. У мене така привичка, якщо поймете, знаєте, я не ну, на своєму прожитому житті привик працювати. Я такий, що я буду до послідно поки. The post office only reimburses him for his gasoline expenses. a rock to prevent the Jiguli from ending up in the river. The bridge that allowed cars to pass was swept away by the last floods. Without Dmitry's willpower, dozens of people would be cut off from the rest of Ukraine. We can't go like a kilometer. We can't go to the road. Один момент я ще 4 км йду. Це від дороги ще 6 км. Раз ніж на 4 км. Починаю звідси. Починаю з цього дому. Мішо! Пошта прибула. Ну як? Ну, Принеса азату. Ми що ж подивимося вже, що знаємо, Почитаємо що. Прес, що, ти... що де? Бо їх вже ми прочитали. Приніс нам газату, ми прочитали, та й вже ми. Знаємо, що де робиться. Ну, то що буде скучно, скучно буде, не знаємо, що, що там. Тому що ну, далеко. 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 Далеко, 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 розстояння. Ну, та є. <рес> Самі не підемо, бо не годні. А Дмитро принесе, вже є і... Рестонож. Так. Все, тоді на добраніч. Our delivery man's rounds are far from over. Dmitry, like the majority of the inhabitants of these forgotten hamlets, misses the good old days under the former USSR, when public transport was available everywhere. Mikola shares the same nostalgia. He's been struggling for four hours, and yet he's only covered 15 kilometers out of the 50 that separate him from the power station where he works. Back in the times of the hammer and the sickle, the road would most likely have been in a similar state, but contrary to today, Ukrainians had the money to buy a car. Що можна сказати? Смотря в чому подивитися. Є одні питання, що може було і краще, а по другому питанні, наприклад, люди дуже мали багато грошей. Але вони не могли нічого купити. Вони мусили стояти навіть чи москвича, чи жигуля купити в очередях, чи там телевізор навіть купити. А тепер є доступні все, але гроші нема де заробити. Ну, 5 тисяч – це середньо. Ну, це лише хіба прокормити і трошки прожити, а що ж відкласти і що ж купити, бо що тут треба вже заробляти збоку. And it's definitely not enough to buy a car that's able to climb these slopes. His Moscovich needs a push. Mm. 
Зараз ще попробую, але тут трошки встигнути. Нема розгону, ні один розігнатися. Це є таке підсос. Більше дає бензин і більше газу. Ідя. Не хоче. He could go back down with the engine turned off, but the old Russian car doesn't want any more to do with it. I was doing a motor yesterday, and so I don't know. I don't know what they did there. I don't know what they did there. I don't know what they did there. Maybe the benzene is good too. Mikola shows a composure that all Ukrainians have learned to maintain through their daily troubles. At least he ended up a little luckier than this driver. This lady who lives across the road knows something about what happened. Mutual aid between travelers in the Carpathians has become a necessity. Mikula is going to need luck. His Moscovich is really not in shape. He still has 40 kilometers to go before he reaches the village where he works, and he's not sure he'll make it. It seems that in Ukraine, the only way to guarantee your arrival is with a sturdy horse-driven cart, unlike with a car. Well, especially the cars dating from the Soviet era. By horse is still the best way to travel at a lower cost. It's no secret that in the countryside, money is lacking. The various political crises, the wars of territory with Russia and corruption are among the many factors which slow down the development of Ukraine. There's even more poverty today than in the times of the Soviet Union. So any idea to earn money is a good one, whatever the risk. The amber miners do not hesitate to turn over as much land as necessary to find the deposit that will make them rich. They brought their tank in order to reach a vein in the middle of the marshes. But the ancient machine is as tired as Mikola's Moscovich. Капітальний ремонт требується. Що треба розбивати? 
Холодне, холодне, холодне. Давай бій ту саме, щоб не розвалити нам кому. Молка. Молка давай. Surprisingly, the wheel is repaired in less than 20 minutes, but reattaching the track and realigning it is another story. The men are likely to have to spend the night in the swamp. But two hours of struggle later, thanks to their perseverance, the tank is ready to go again. They all hope that the reward will be as high as the effort, that there is indeed amber at the end of their search. These men are unaware, but their thirst for money puts their families and all the inhabitants of the surrounding towns in danger. Every time they plough through the swamp with their tank on their search for amber, clearing the forests and digging up the ground, they release an invisible poison that the wind spreads to the whole population. They are unknowingly breathing in radioactive dust from Chernobyl, which has been trapped in the ground since the catastrophe. The nuclear power plant exploded on the 26th of April, 1986. Today, it's covered by this giant, almost sarcophagus-looking structure that you can see in the distance. However, the site itself is still radioactive. All the inhabitants who were within a radius of 30 kilometers were evacuated, at least 200,000 people. The city of Pripyat resembles one in a disaster movie. It's been 35 years since somebody has lived there, with a couple of exceptions. Это же наша земля, понимаете? Это мои родители, моих дедов. У меня тут деды похоронены, бабы, мои все родственники. Они всю жизнь обрабатывали. Зачем мне чужая земля где-то нужна, если у меня есть своя? Victoria, a civil servant, couldn't stand her small apartment that she had in the city any longer. So she decided to return to the land of her ancestors, regardless of the radioactive risks. And she's not the only one. There are dozens like her. They farm, hunt and fish without worrying about the poison that lurks in the air and food. Ну и что, зато хоть посажу картошку. Я как раз хотела сегодня ее посадить. И она уже будет расти. 
Главное посадить на убывающую луну. Ухаживаем за ней, потом собираем урожай хороший, закрываем на зиму. И зимой уже потом открываем, готовим борщ украинский. Victoria doesn't live alone in this run-down house. Вот здесь у нас мама наша, Валентина Ивановна. Valentina proudly wears a medal of the Chernobyl heroes. It's a miracle that she's still alive. She was in the heart of the catastrophe. Мама доктор. Вот это они такие были молодости. Вот это они спасали мир тогда. Молодые были. И я была скорой, работаю. Сутки роблю трое дома. А у них у всех симптомы. То, что вот работа, головокружение. Вони спасайте, ми про що ми можемо спасати? Промиваємо желудки їм раз, то що нова ну, робота. Так, промивають желудки, щоб легше було їм трохи. А, а передо мною якісь монстри, такі наші крокодили, такі е, всякі чудесні створення такі. Ось відкриєш і вже знов тебе ця картина трагедії перед глазами. Ето не According to scientists, the city of Pripyat will remain uninhabitable for 24,000 years. But not everything is hopeless in this no man's land. Without human interference for the past 35 years, nature is taking over. Today, the Chernobyl region has become a veritable Noah's Ark and is even home to the last wild horses in the world. Around the ruined nuclear power plant, deer, wolves and bears are more numerous than anywhere else in the country. This lies in stark contrast to the Carpathian region, which is seeing its large animals disappear. This is the main reason, deforestation. Just like Brazil, 90% of the wood here is cut illegally. The plundering is so devastating that the Ukrainians have adopted the habit of saying that in their country, the mountains are now bald. The largest forest in Europe is disappearing. Men no longer have the power to save the forest. However, the animals do. Once a month, Miroslav and his son Yuri ascend 1,600 meters of altitude via a very perilous path. Four men lend them a hand. In the back, the journey is exhausting. The summit is only 15 kilometers away. But it takes two days to reach. Four hands are not enough to drive this old Soviet truck. Let's 
Восьмерайку, чтобы подтянуть машину. Уважай. It's no easy job to move seven tons of steel, especially with smooth tires. They hope their truck will hold. As if there is a problem, nobody will come to look for them. They're lost in the middle of the vast forest. Fortunately, when the night begins to fall, the men arrive at the encampment. Three hours of driving on tricky roads have turned their stomachs. It's minus 15 degrees in the Ukrainian mountains, so fat is an important component of any starter, main course and dessert. And to wash it all down, homemade vodka. Every year, these men watch the Carpathian forests disappear a little more. A plundering that forest rangers, policemen and politicians, corrupted by the various forest mafias, participate in. Yuri, who's been roaming the forest since his childhood, is disgusted. They go to sleep under the stars. The night promises to be gentle for these protectors of the mountains. On the other side of the Carpathians, Mikola is once again in trouble. His old Russian car is on its last legs. 25 kilometers in eight hours is a very poor speed. A second engine will not be enough to reach the power station where he works. Hey, Ivan, Ivan is the guardian angel of this part of the mountain. He helps the drivers to pass the last 25 kilometers, which lead to the power station. Yeah. 
In the remote corners of the Carpathians, the inhabitants are left to fend for themselves. The authorities do not have the means to maintain the infrastructure. There are only 15 kilometers to go and both are not sure they will make it. His Moscovich is about to throw in the towel. Ten kilometers from the power station, the old Russian car breaks down. Та я чую, тут начало вже гриміти таке, тому масло нагрілося, і воно починає вже коцкотіти. Тобі є якийсь шланг чи їх би то? А їх шланг? Тоді я не знав, є? Бо вітер пішло в бачок, а бачок нижчий. І він подув, і то пішло назад у радіатор. It's no use. A few minutes later, the car stops for good. Mikola will spend the night at Ivan's place, hoping to leave tomorrow morning. <coughs> On the other side of the mountain, the mountaineers are preparing their sleeping space. They're going to spend the night in the back of their truck in minus 18 degrees. <laughs> Ми працюємо сіно, щоб постелити доски на низ рівномірно, щоб коротше ні, нікого не давило в спину, там у голову, у цей. І потім закинемо зверху сіно. І всі вже забуруємося так, як е, ці боровики, типу. Ми будемо співати, ой, не добре. Ой, нікому так не добре. Ми зверху поїздимо. Так, хто від борта? Ні, на тату ніхто не буде спати. Вай вперед, два. They attempt to fall asleep with the lurking fear of bears as well as a fear of falling off the truck as they've all had a bit too much of their homemade vodka. А ви медвідь не забрав. Та ховай його, аби не нападала роса на них. Буде ранком мокрі. Не буду в чому продовжувати. Не, і скажи, гуцули колесу, ну. Для гуцулів саме головне у цьому життю обу. А це ще в Николая. In the early morning, frost covers their clothes. The thermometer reads minus 20 degrees. Не As for Yuri, he's still warm from the alcohol he drank the night before. Я спав чудово. Чудово. In the Carpathians, breakfast consists of a hot drink, cheese, and some fat, of course. Будем надеяться, что поднимемся на гору у хорошем новом. Богу дяку. In the middle of winter in the mountains, the poor state of the roads cuts off entire villages. Many villages no longer dare to go out. Apart from the radio and television, their only contact with the outside world is the postman. <laughs> Besides the poor infrastructure, since the recent pension law changes, the elderly can no longer afford a taxi or even to go shopping in town. Most of them live off their vegetable gardens and food parcels sent by their children. 
Dimitri is expected like a messiah. Dimitri does more than just his duties as a postman. The postman is also responsible for distributing pensions at the end of each month and for reading electricity meters. When Dimitri retires and gives up driving, during winter, the inhabitants of the villages will be completely isolated. As everyone knows that no one will be daring enough to take over from the old postman. In the swamps, the tank of the amber miners seems to be in good condition this time. It still has enough strength to crush the trees in its path. After three hours at 15 kilometers per hour, the men finally arrive at the site. Unlike other miners around the world, digging for amber is not really a dangerous or even exhausting job. Attached to the end of a long pole is a high-powered jet that digs into the earth, and then you just have to wait. It's hard to believe that a stone could float. Amber is an organic stone, or to be more precise, the resin of a pine tree that fossilized 50 million years ago. Ukraine is said to have the second largest deposit of amber in the world after Russia. As nothing is really regulated here, 90% of its extraction is illegal. Entire forests are disappearing to make way for land that resembles a war zone. Люди не хотят жить. Хочу вкормить семью. Надо чем заниматься. 
In the region, the factories dating back to the former USSR have gradually closed down one after another. Unemployment has set in and today the average salary does not exceed $350. At $5,800 per kilogram, many attempted. Amber. Amber. All year round, the four men play a game of cat and mouse with the police. And on this very day, one of their informants warns them by text message that the police are on their way. This time, the amber thieves managed to escape, an escape well covered by the tall grass of the swamp. But as they ravage everything, soon enough, its vastness will turn into a desert. In Ukraine, nature is in a state of emergency. The Carpathian Forest, the largest forest in Europe, is being plundered by timber mafias, and its disappearance threatens wildlife. Yuri and Miroslav try to help the animals by dropping off food in the most remote parts of the forest, but reaching them is no easy task. The heavy truck sinks into the mud. For the father and son, going back, is not an option. After two days and six hours, they reach the end of the 15 kilometer climb. Saving and feeding the animals of the forest has become a call of the wild for Yuri and his men. They will come back in a month to tackle the road once more. There is one other person whose life is a challenge, but he, unlike Yuri and his father, faces this challenge every time he goes to work. Mikola is stopped almost every kilometer. And when it's not the snow that's holding him back. It's the engine of his old Moscovich that lets him down. Він до насос нагрівся і охлаждаю. 
Кладу мокру тряпку, ды остыл. It took him two days to drive the 50 kilometers to his job. The power plant is located in one of the most isolated villages in the Carpathians. Only 10 inhabitants and no shops. Забывается, конечно, особенно тут в горах люди птикают, и чем меньше людей, то они думают, ну, например, тут то, что тут скучно, что не маски им заговорить, будет уже мало людей. Все повыехали в места, молодежь птикает, а старики вымирают. Ну, то бы тут нема работы, а людям треба как-то прожить. Воно забрали. Большинство все едут на Польшу, чтобы загорнуться здесь на заработок. The village is only two kilometers from the border with Romania. On the other side of its barbed wire is Europe. A dreamland for many Ukrainians, even if the road might be long. <laughs>